Why well, hello there and welcome to another Dyer's vlog. Today I will be talking about All Stars and my overall experience. Basically, uh, my experience throughout the event, after the event, and now that I'm done with the event, what I will plan to do. So getting into it, um, first thing I want to talk about was uh, playing with my All Star teammates. So it was a lot of fun being able to, even though I didn't play for ranked for a week and I didn't practice for this event. I um why well, I, I played I played league but I wasn't playing on ranked and then even then I was getting owned in ranked so <laughs> you saw the result of that um even though uh, I didn't play that much I had a lot of fun with uh a lot of the all star modes that I was able to play in and able to play against other regions and their all stars and um it kind of reminded me of how competitive play was and like from a new fresh point of view and uh, to give you an example of that, so for jungling, Medios, very strong jungler in NA. Bjergsen, best mid laner in NA. Double F, best AD in NA. And then uh, Afro, who is uh, probably best support in NA also. So basically, I get to play with an all star NA team. And you know whether it's for fun or against other regions like it was it was just great like the atmosphere of the team was great everyone's just chill everyone's just trying to you know have some fun and like just just being here and it reminded me a lot of like how when teams are formed and how everything goes great in the start and then the test of time and obstacles test you as time goes on but um as i was in this event I was trying to, uh, I wasn't feeling that great on the first day because uh, the first day the shuttle time kind of got off a bit and then we played against Europe and I didn't do too well with Singe. I wanted to give my fans a Singe game and you know all of my teammates were completely okay with that. Like everyone was really open, everyone was really chill and there's really no problems between anyone. Um, it was really funny hanging out with them because they're like everyone is just so funny too and everyone talks it's like it's just great it was just such a great environment i i loved it um next thing was uh level one planning okay so for the na versus europe match level one planning was basically we got into champ select and afro was like you're going to do this this and this and we kept asking questions and for 30 seconds i was like the most panicked plant at level one because we didn't plant anything for the europe match because uh it was the first match we didn't know what to expect so we just kind of winged it went into it and the level one went pretty it was, it was pretty funny so um the next thing i want to talk about for that is the try hard point of view and the chill point of view so um i think some of you guys are actually angry at huni for playing jacks and i want you guys to understand that um winning is also a fun thing and at the same time, like you can't you can't blame competitive players like the best in their region to not try hard or not well like just try to win. Like he's he's not like super try hard and he's just trying to win. Because that's just the nature of like League of Legends Pro scene. When you're having fun, you're winning, you're doing all this crazy stuff. Um if you play a unorthodox pick, it's gonna be a pick that's like you know still meta like let's say jace top or something like it's still gonna be like a pretty good pick um if you guys are actually upset at him for that then please don't be and if you're not then it's all good like really it doesn't it really doesn't matter it's all like some people brought up like oh oh for satan just oh god <laughs> like whatever man i heard i've heard the meme enough every time a top player feeds like oh this guy's cosplaying Darius. it's like it's it's all good man it doesn't it doesn't really matter like they're cool we're cool there's no there's no problems it's just when when pros or commentators bring it up to the community and some people see it as a problem that's that's just between those people and you know it's it's really it's it's really fun i had a lot of fun um so moving on to the next thing is uh so after that game i had a little bit of trauma and basically after that game i did the thing where i just look at the reddit thread i look at my name 
And then I saw a post where Thorn made a smug comment, and then I realized that it's just, you know, it's just, it's just joking around, honestly. Like, uh, by now I should be able to laugh at, at it because I'm retired. Who cares? Like, you know, typical diarist international performance. Like, whatever, man. You know. I've had my good times in my career and I've had my bad and you know, that's why I retired. No motivation to practice as hard to be the best, which is why the current TSM this which is why I said I think they'll definitely make it to worlds. And you know, motivation is a completely huge thing. And I would talk about some other players that aren't on teams that are also really good, but uh that's not for me to say. But the moral of the story is motivation is a big thing and I'm just trying to wind down and get used to stream life and you know just adjusting to everything because sometimes I read things I take things too seriously and um, by talking to my all-star teammates like I got a lot of different points of views like um, so a good example is Afromu he he's watched real sports before and he's seen all this NAEU stuff happen except like in real sports it's just team to team not really regional like not like the olympics and stuff like i i'm kind of new to it and so when it happened and from the start of my career i felt like i had power over it and as time went on the power kind of faded and it was really upsetting because i couldn't do anything about the toxicity other than to try and do my best to be a better role model because if there's anyone to blame it's the people that started out being role models that were toxic and solo queue and i've been toxic in the past and it's just understandable um the nature of league of legends is to have fun and win and when things go wrong people will naturally get upset because you're using their time you're wasting your time and it's just it's just how it is so that's something i've come to accept um thanks to opinions of many uh or my all-star teammates and some other people and that's something i'm trying to learn and understand and while trying to um, tone it down so and also uh, when there is this kind of stuff it's actually needed for the scene like if if there's no one there to make up all this bullshit like oh uh make fun of balls for being diamond two or whatever then it's i guess it's boring which was great because when they 3-0'd in the first week, that is like the greatest thing. Like if they didn't like say the really dumb shit like that, then we would never have like any other reaction. So <laughs> cause what usually happens is they say something to like a team that's kind of gonna happen, like seventh place NA team where it's like, oh, they'll probably not do this so well. And then if they do well, it'll be like oh yeah i expected this anyways like they kind of try to save face and it's all honestly all for the good of entertainment so now i'm trying to understand that um i never saw it from that point of view because being on the receiving side is very blinding it's like looking at a sun and then you're like you know what i'm trying to say um so another thing was when santorin joined tsm my traumas re-emerged um, so that had actually had nothing to do with Santorin because he's a super nice guy and he motivated me to be really healthy. It was more of, I had a lot of bad habits built into League of Legends and I just needed a step away. When you play a game for as long as I have, you just need to step away. You'll notice that there's other players that have played lo as long as I have. They've, they've found some kind of stress outlet that like, you know, keeps them like, from going to the point of where I was in terms of getting upset. And there's a lot of different factors, like tons of different factors. But the main thing I want to say is that I started to think differently. Like, like I, I wasn't like trusting myself or I was trying to prove myself to my teammates. I was trying to go over my limits. And then I just kept going back and forth where I cared a lot. I cared a little like a fucking, you know, mood swing teenager and it was just really bad because every time i played bad i always felt like in the back of my teammates minds it's like damn dyer's fucked up again and that made me feel really bad so stepping away from it finally is gonna really cure me of my trauma and maybe after a year like you know i'll see where i am in a year um let's see my one verse one experience so when I played against Kira, I actually practiced like Caitlyn, 
Quinn, Corky, like good one versus ones champions. And then for some reason, when I got on stage in the rain, I was like, huh, I want to play Malzahar. Then I did Max E. Then I canceled my ult. And then I lost. So, and then uh, Beer won the whole thing. So that's all good. Um, a lot of people ask, why did I pick Malzahar? There was no reasoning for it. I just felt like it. That that's honestly it. <laughs> there was literally no planning. Um, another cool thing at All Stars was taking pictures. I got to get a lot of pictures with other All Stars, and um, you know, just posted on social media, social networking, whatever it's called. Um, that was great. I I really liked that a lot. And some of the uh, teams from other regions that don't speak English, they uh. They actually have pretty good in English. Like Carsa has pretty good English. So that was a really, really cool experience. And they were all really friendly and happy. Like Rookie was really bubbly. And he was just, he was just really cool in general. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Huni was f super hilarious. Oh, man. So I already talked about motivation. The wild card 5-on-5. Five five. Um, so for the wild card 5-on-5... Five five, we were kind of scared to throw because if we lost, like the amount of shitstorm that comes from Reddit, like that, the fear, that fear is an actual real thing. I was actually going to pick Kha'Zix that game, but I just felt like, oh, I want to play Malphite and then do the infamous Darius Ulta support. And that actually happened that game where I just flash Ulta support to get the support kill. It happened twice that game. I don't know if anyone noticed, but it was pretty funny. Um, but I did want to play Kha'Zix. The Blitzcrank 5 and 5 is probably my highlight of the whole event. Um, the team was like... <laughs> it was Madlife, Karsa, me, um, Ziv, and... Uh, fuck. I, I can't remember all five, but we... Uh, it was it was great. The level one, the shot calling, like, it was... God, why am I even talking about it? I just, I'm just saying it was a great thing. Um, the LPL 5-on-5. Five five, so, in the history of scrims, I when I play against Coral, I usually judge a top laner by how badly they abuse me. And against Coral, I was able to win lane early because GP is supposed to win lane early. And then miscommunication happened, and then he TP'd bot, got three kills, and then I was warm. I started warming up through the game. I missed like two triple barrels. Um, some people thought I was holding my or never using my ult, but I was actually holding it at times. And I, I'd have to go back and look at what points people are actually asking me so I can actually give you an analytical answer and tell you why I didn't ult there. But for that, I was mostly holding my ult for the most part. And. I don't want to give excuses, but I did not play ranked for a while. And even when I do, I get owned and ranked. That was the day where I decided to uh, play a little bit of ranked the night before. And I played against, uh, or the the night after, yeah. And I played against Coral 1, Uzi, and Claire Love in Solo Kun. I actually won one of those games. I went Legendary in Elise Jungle, so that felt good. Um, so moving on from the LPL thing. Tandem with Bjerg. So... The biggest reason for the tandem, our tandem failure actually was because our we're, our teammates were really loud and we couldn't hear each other. We actually practiced TF, but they played Yasuo, so we just had Annie as a backup. It was really hilarious. Like I was on the keyboard and Beerg was on the mouse, and since we couldn't hear each other, it was kind of tilting. I could kind of tell with Beerg's movements that he was like he was not happy. <laughs> Because uh, we just could not communicate with each other. But we did gank uh, Huni and Kasing top like three times. It was super hilarious. Huni, oh my god. The high five thing he did over and over is so funny. Um, I really, really had a great time in the tandem mode and the Blizz crank mode. It was by far the highlights of the tournament for me. And watching the one versus ones and all the stuff was it's just really entertaining. Like I wasn't expecting it to be that much fun. And it was just overwhelmingly fun. I, I just want to express that to you guys. The one versus one finals. So with uh, Bjerg and Double. I don't know what I wanted to talk about for that. But I feel like Bjerg kind of threw the first game. Then Double threw the second. And then the third one. Like 
beer practices with Turtle for Velkaz and LCS before, and then I guess Doublelift beat uh, Beerg and Velkaz two days before, so he felt confident that way. So Beerg kind of hustled him, I guess, in a way. Some of you guys may see it as like Doublelift throwing, but Doublelift just tried to win and just got out, outplayed, outsmarted. I, I, I don't know. But Doublelift is the kind of player where he doesn't really like fully rely on strategy he's just his mechanics are so insanely good that it just makes up for everything and that's why having a really good support makes them like literally god um the fire versus ice all-stars opinion so apparently for the fire side they had three koreans and two americans and the americans are kind of forced to listen to the koreans because of how it felt in the atmosphere and i was watching the game and i felt like the fire side was stacked but amazing ganked at the right times and played really well. Um, Froggen did really well. Uh, he himself knows that uh, it's been a while for him. Uh, Uzi was a god on Callista. And then the Trundle Pillars of that game was just insane. Um, I'm going to keep moving on because I don't want to make this vlog too fast. Um, Europe versus LCK. The first game they got stopped, and then I guess for Huni, once he dies, it just doesn't stop. It's kind of hard because he's the kind of he, he seems like the kind of player that he always gets ahead. So it's really rare to see these players get behind. And then the second game they were playing really really well, and then I fell asleep because at this time I'm extremely tired and my sleeping schedule is garbage. So I was watching and I fell asleep on the couch in the player room. Um, of the player lounge and i didn't get to see the rest so that's why i showed up to the stage late because i was sleeping um and so the conclusion for the whole thing is basically i had a lot of fun and i'm really really thankful that you guys voted me in because i didn't expect it to be as fun as it was it was actually amazing for me i had so much fun like i i just can't explain it to you guys i it just like thank you very much for voting me in. Um, it motivated me to play league more and get to the very high level that other players are. So I'm when the ladder resets, I'm going to grind and get try and get to challenger and try to reach that level once again. Um, at the same time, I have my other account that's named. Um, I forgot what the name is right now, but my the account I leveled up that, that I did ultimate bravery on, I'm gonna do unranked to challenger that. I already explained all of that, but I'm gonna do unranked to challenger on NA in Europe. And the lane control video is still coming. Um, just a lot of stuff I said in the last vlog, so I'm not gonna keep this for too long. But once again, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, you don't have to leave it in the comments down below, but. Uh, get it to me somehow anyways thanks for watching love you guys have a good day or evening whatever time it is for you and bye